Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a review on the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation as you can see by the title. I'm so excited to be bringing this review to my channel because NYX kindly sent over the 10 darker shades of this collection. Now the foundation comes in 45 shades and it is in a collaboration with Alyssa Ashley here on YouTube. She is an incredible YouTuber. She's so insightful in her reviews and her tutorials. Um, she's extremely gifted and she's a woman of color too so it's really cool that they um really used her she's been like super opinionated with shade ranges um over the last year or so um, so it's really cool that they used her as an ambassador for this shade range um i love the way that the beauty industry is going um when you see brands like nyx create uh, foundations in 45 shades 45 shades and each foundation is only $14.99. Um, that's pretty insane to me. I do remember being a little girl, like, you know, when I first started to wear makeup and I'd walk down the drugstore aisle or wherever it was that I got my makeup at the time. I guess it was the drugstore, right? Um, and there were never shades for me. Like, literally, there was never shades for me. I had to go to MAC to get any um, colors from when I was like 15 years old and I wanted to wear foundation even though I didn't need it. You know, we've just come a long way so I'm just excited to bring you guys, it's like it just means so much when I get to review products that I know cater to basically every single skin tone, you know. Um, like it, no matter, you could be the palest of person, you could be the deepest of skin tones and there's a foundation shade for you which is such a beautiful thing to see um, how inclusive we're being in 20 18 and this really should be a permanent feature for all brands i know there's things like budget etc demographic that not all brands are going to come out with 45 shades but it really is so encouraging when one does and i just think of every other like 14 15 year old whatever teenager that walks into a drugstore and or just can go online or on amazon and find a shade that um matches them Ooh, i just got a little chills so if you'd like to see how this foundation turned out then definitely keep on watching and if you like the way that this makeup looks then definitely thumbs this video up already as well as subscribe to my channel if you like makeup tutorials product reviews hair reviews tutorials all that kind of stuff we have a lot of fun around here and i'd love for you to join my youtube family so without further ado let's get into the review Girl, drugstore foundation, $14.99, matte, and apparently full coverage, kind of like a dream, right? Especially when you're buying like $50 foundations, that kind of thing. So I'm not going to do too much talking, talking, talking. I really just want to get into it. I want to review. I want to demo. And I want to see if this is actually worth it. So I've already done my eyes in a separate video that I just filmed uh, reviewing the Norvina palette. So if you want to see my thoughts on that palette, make sure that you're subscribed and that your notifications are turned on. On, but right now we're gonna get into the skin which I'm so excited about okay so the first thing that I'm gonna do is prime my face I have been using this makeup forever step one primer for like I don't know I think it's been like two or three weeks every single day and usually I like change up my primers when I change up my foundations but this has been my go-to uh, primer so this is what I'm going to use on my skin today um, it's awesome it's the base uh, mattifying primer oh all right and as you all know wow that was way too much you guys like this is not how much primer I use well but you know what, I'm not going to waste it and I can't put it back in the bottle. So this is what's happening right now in life. So anyway, I usually just try to use the primer in my T-zone because that's where I get oily on my chin, in my smile lines because I feel like it works like a little bit of a pore filler. And then directly here, like right onto my forehead. Now, let's just say one thing before we get into this review. I'm not doing a wear test since it is currently 8.58 p.m. So I'm not going to obviously be staying up until like 6 in the morning to show you guys. Um, but this is a 24-hour foundation. Really, I just want to see what the finish is like um, and how it works with like the rest of my products. If you do want to see a wear test and everything, there's a ton of other YouTubers who have actually created that. But today, we're just putting it on and then we're taking it off and we're going to sleep. Getting into the foundation, it arrived in this box over here. And if you open it up, oh my god. Um, I love NYX packaging, it's so stunning. So I got this little sleeve here that says 
the NYX um, Can't Stop Wearing Stuff Foundation. And in the back, it has all these little images of Alyssa Ashley. So congrats to her on this um, collaboration. And then in here, I have 10 of these shades. And then one of my favorite things, which is that NYX blending sponge that I use in a lot of my tutorials. If you have not seen swatches of this foundation just yet, head over to my Instagram, make sure that you're following me there because I've already posted an image of the swatches over there. You will be very, very impressed. Um, and I'm gonna swatch them on my cheek and just so you guys can see on my face. So first I'm swatching the shade Deep Ebony. Next up I'm swatching the shade Deep Walnut. Then we're going into Deep Espresso. Wow, that's so rich. Our next shade is Chestnut. Next shade that I'm going in with is called Warm Walnut. All right, and then moving right on, we're gonna go into the shade Walnut. It actually looks like it might be a match already. Next, we're going into Deep Cool. The shade I really like, wow. Then we're going into the color Cocoa. It's funny because I feel like once I run out of one bottle, I could use a, f a few of these. Hmm. After that, we're going into the color Deep Rich. The last color is the shade Mocha. So I feel like I'm going to try out the shade Mocha and then I'm going to keep out the shade Deep Cool because this might be the color for these darker areas. Now, I have no idea how this applies, so what do I do? Okay. The first thing that I have to do is wet my sponge. I'm going to use this NYX sponge. All right, so I have no idea how this foundation applies, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half my face with a brush, other half with a beauty blender, and we're just going to see what happens, okay? Um, so I'm going to start with the brush side because, I don't know, and I just put one pump of foundation. Wow. This is super full coverage. Holy wow. Do you guys see that? It dries very quickly, so I'm glad I only started with just this side of my face because I would have had problems already. Uh, and this does seem like kind of a good match. I feel like it matches nicely with my neck and the rest of my body. But this could dries completely matte. Like, I can tell you already, there's a little bit of transfer in now, but it's just started drying. But I have a feeling like this is one of those foundations that you literally do not have to set at all. So I'm going to take another pump and I'm using a Sigma brush. It's my Flat Kabuki F80 brush, which is my favorite foundation brush of all time. Oh my God, I think I almost put too much. I know this is a good foundation color too when it's not too light around this area because I'm much darker in this area and when I choose too light of a shade it always is like super ashy in that area which it's not. I'm just slowly kind of patting it into my hairline. Um, not too much. And wow guys like this is what it looks like already. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see the texture and the finish like what the heck. That's like, okay, that's two pumps of foundation, obviously. Um, but look how full coverage that is. I knew it was going to be good, but honestly, like, I didn't really expect this. Hmm. I'm going to use a beauty blender to blend the side out. So you'll see now with the coverage, because I do have these kind of spots and a few marks on this side a lot more. Um, so I'm going to pump once of that. And then I'm just using my Beauty Blender. Wow. So for some reason, I feel like it looks darker for some on this side using my Beauty Blender. Like the color looks like it's applying much darker than it did on the other side of my face. Again, it's probably not the sponge's fault, but it still applies pretty full coverage with the sponge. Um, it does dry so quickly though that I think it's actually just easier for application purposes to go in with a brush because you have more control. And then looking closely, you do get slightly more coverage. Like if I look closely here and I show you those imperfections, like I still can see that. 
those little dots um, and the blemishes. Whereas I think if I used the brush, I would have had um, more coverage. That wasn't even a full pump to be honest, but I just know I need less on my forehead, so I don't wanna to waste too much of the product. And then I'm just kind of patting it into my, my skin and my hairline. Just a little weeny bit, a little bit more. Okay, so my camera overheated a little bit. I just needed to wait for it to recharge. And why did I start applying the concealer to the side of my face? Because this foundation is so matte, I was really concerned about using creams on top of it. So I went in with a very soft matte concealer, which is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer in the color Amand. This is kind of the perfect concealer to use with this kind of super matte foundation because of its texture. So these two will agree with each other. So first of all, I just applied a little bit on um, this brush. I'm using a Morphe Y10 brush, which is usually what I just like on a day to day when I'm doing a quick face. This is what I actually apply my concealer with. And then just to get more coverage in this area, I will take my actual beauty sponge and I will dip it straight into the concealer and then I will just dot it where I need it on the face. And then I'm just adding some right here to the center of the forehead just to bring some light into this area and blending that out slightly onto the nose, although we are going to use powders for the rest of this. And actually, I'm very impressed at how this is looking. I think if I had used a creamier concealer, I may have had problems. I think maybe the Tarte Shape Tape would have been okay or a thicker kind of um, soft, more matte concealer, but anything that's like super creamy, just be careful with that. So to contour today, I'm using my Fenty Matte Stick, again, because this is kind of a matte contour as well. So I'm gonna go in with this guy um in all the regular areas that i would contour including my nose just a little bit and then we're just going to blend that out using a sigma f79 concealer blend kabuki and that contour's falling right into place it doesn't seem like it's interrupting anything which is good so far so good but I can feel like it's not super easy to blend and honestly the crazy thing is I have super oily skin and I already feel like in this section specifically like my skin's a little bit tight so even me with oily skin it might actually help to use a hydrating primer underneath instead of a mattifying primer with this mattifying foundation so I must say, because of the consistency of this foundation, I am actually having a hard time blending out my contour. And I feel like on my forehead, it has gotten a little bit patchy. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can zoom in. See, it is a little bit patchy. Um, it is blending, but it's taking a lot more work than it usually would for everything to kind of blend. And I can see that patchiness happening over there. And so to set all of that, I'm using the Sasha Buttercup Powder. And I'm actually just gonna go in with a brush instead because I just don't want any more cakiness. And I'm going to gently set my under eye. And I'm gently running this powder not actually for reasons of setting my face, more just uh, to create some dimension in the face. All right, so I'm just gonna finish up the rest of my face really quickly. Now oh, that's that pop that I was waiting for. All right, you guys, and so this is my uh, final look. I just wanna give you some final thoughts on this foundation. Um, First thing that I'm noticing because I am very conscious of it and it's crazy to me because my skin is so oily like so 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 oily 
I'm very tight over here. Like you know when you wash your face and you haven't put lotion on and sometimes if you use too harsh of a face wash, um, you get like a little tense over here. This area is my smile lines, like where I usually get all the cracking um, with other foundations. Um, and it's just like a little dry. So I think what would be amazing, and I didn't do it because I didn't actually spray anything over this foundation, but I think what would be amazing if you use some MAC Fix Plus on here, because that will really like add some moisture back into the face and allow this to kind of like seep in a little bit. Um, so that's a great solution. Another thing that I would be doing, because it looks beautiful, but I want it to be comfortable, and especially for my girls who are dry, if, if you have super dry skin, I don't know, this is the foundation for you to be honest but if you still want to try it make sure that your skin is hydrated underneath your drinking water <laughs> now we're getting into health right um, make sure that you're using um, great moisturizers if you do need to use a primer make sure it's a super hydrating primer you don't want to use anything with oil control that's mattifying any of that stuff because it really is not going to work for you if you do that but i am very impressed at how full coverage this foundation is outside of this area over here um, it probably is like very very comfortable. I just don't have fix plus. <gasps> is that fix plus right there? Hang on one second Oh sweet, okay you guys so I actually had a bottle of fix plus that's like right here, so I'm gonna spray my face Wow, so I just sprayed my face exactly in those areas that I said um, we're feeling tight and it has actually completely loosened up. So maybe all you really need is to use a setting spray that is like a dewy setting spray or hydrating setting spray or this fix press is perfect if you have it. Most of us do that love makeup anyway. Um, yeah, mm, I feel so much better. Wow. <laughs> so crazy yeah other than that i mean in terms of the pricing i you know usually for drugstore i'd be like oh it's a little pricey for drugstore but it's not like honestly for what you're getting this is an incredibly highly fun like high functioning high performing foundation you're getting 30 mils which is the average that you get in every other drugstore so this is going to be it's a little higher than other drugstore foundations but it performs like a high-end foundation yeah so that is the final look and the final thoughts of this foundation if you enjoyed this review definitely give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel if you enjoy makeup tutorials product reviews all of that kind of stuff as well as comment down below on any other videos that you guys want to see thank you so much for watching love you guys so much and remember don't need anybody dim yo glitter <laughs> bye Love you guys.